Welcome to Wellness Wednesdays with Sam, the Miracle Man. You'll join a captivating and transformational podcast where we'll explore the extraordinary journey of Sam, a man who overcame all odds to reclaim his life and health. Each Wednesday, Sam shares his inspiring stories of growth, health, and his journey to find wellness through self-care, mental well-being, and physical rejuvenation. We'll also have dynamic and interesting interviews with professionals in health, fitness, spirituality, and personal growth to help you on your journey to uncover the true secrets to living your best life. With just a click, you can subscribe. We will welcome you every week. Now here's your amazing host, Sam. Hey, Miracle Makers. Welcome to another episode of Wellness Wednesdays. I'm your host, Sam, the Miracle Man. So I hope you're feeling well and living life on your terms. I had a great conversation with Brian Burnerman from Conscious Action. We talked about the importance of slowing down. By slowing down, we can process our emotions and return to a state of well-being without delay. Well, here's the interview with Brian. Take good care. Hello, I'm here with Brian. Brian, welcome. Thank you, Sam, so much for having me here. All right, so you're the co-founder of Conscious Action, which I think is really profound. But let's, before we get into that, where were you before conscious action, if you will? Yeah, so I, I think that I've had, uh, at least for me, I think that I've had a pretty interesting life so far. I, I grew up in Argentina, uh, you know, like typical family, typical childhood, sports, TV, the very beginnings of the internet. <laughs> um, and then... Uh, like I started when I was a teenager, I started to, um, through my parents, I started to learn about different practices like meditation and yoga and energy healing and a lot of different things that really changed my entire life. Uh, and, and that was the beginning of a discovery and transformation for, for myself and and after I finished my studies, I, I moved to, to New York, then Miami, then Germany, then back to the States. Then I lived for a few years um, in a retreat center in the middle of a mountain in California. And then I came to New Zealand, uh, where I am now and where I've been for the last eight years. Um, and it's been a very interesting journey as well for myself in terms of getting to connect with my essence, getting to understand myself, getting to befriend my my parts and, and to have a much better conscious connection with both the internal world and the outside world. Right. So it sounds like you, this was part of your environment growing up. It just wasn't later in life, like in my own case, it was later in life I discovered this, that you grew up with this. So it's, it is a different path. Yeah, well, kind of like, you know, up until I was like 15, 16, really, it was super normal, let's call it uh, life. And, and after that, it was a little bit more. So um, at that time, my parents were slowly starting to to talk about some of the things that they were learning about themselves and, and little by little. And then the transformation started to happen super fast. Right. So what, what was the transformation from you? Like before 15, you're one way, then after your practices, you see yourself shifting in a different way, a different way of expressing yourself in the world. Yes, definitely. So up until I was 15, 16, like I was super stressed out. I was, um, you know, I, I had a lot of anger uh, that manifested a lot when I started driving like I, I had that road rage <laughs> when I was 16 and I was driving it was like every time that someone cut me off I was like uh, and and I was super shy like I wouldn't even ask questions to almost even people that I know um and and I didn't know you know what was my place really I couldn't fit in in a lot of environments I was I think that slightly different than a lot of people in some ways like um i didn't want to drink or do drugs or smoke cigarettes as with my friends you know like that's 
the teenage years of discovering and trying all of those things out and, and I didn't want to do that so I was kind of like the an outsider or or loser um, and then I started to through these practices the most important thing that happened was for me that and I remember this vividly still up until this day, uh, the first Tibetan yoga class that I that I went to explore. And it was like the first time that I actually felt the feelings of my body. Up until that moment, I thought that I knew what it was like feeling, but I didn't really. And that was the turning point. And, and through there, I discovered that I can really feel what's going on. Um, and that is happening in the present. And then through that, I understood that I was feeling certain things that were outside of my body. And that's when I discovered energy healing through Reiki and a few other modalities. And then I was like, oh, wow, like I can, I can do this. And those two were some of the biggest turning points of, of those years. And then, you know, like a lot more, but, but those two things were super beneficial at that moment. Right. That makes perfect sense because I think for a lot of people, they read lots of stuff, they do lots of studying, but they don't have that direct experience without that direct experience. I think it's very difficult. I know Wayne Dyer in the past talked about these quantum moments where like time seems to stand still and this something profound happened. It just shifts your hot whole outlook so that sounds like pretty much what you went through like at 15 yeah. 16 then you had this direct experience and life just became different yeah and, and you know I, I i can i always uh and often share as well like how and i wasn't sure that this was going to happen but i remember i must have been 17 or something like that um, and i was driving and someone cut me off and up until that moment, as I was saying, I had road rage. Up until that moment, my my natural reaction was just, ah, you know, like and shouting and giving them the finger and everything. And I realized someone cut me off and I was like, oh, that happened. And then I felt the feeling in my body. And then in that moment, it clicked. Oh, this is what, I, what I'm doing every time that I'm, you know, like practicing Tibetan yoga. I am noticing the feelings i am slowing down so i don't have to react so that i can actually notice what is actually going on how am i actually feeling not going to the reaction pattern but going to how do i choose to engage and respond with this present moment and it was so you know like as you were saying those those moments of realization that i was like wow what i'm actually practicing is transferring into my daily life and then i kept on doing it more because i thought wow this is actually having a huge impact not only in those moments that i am meditating or practicing this is having a huge impact in every single moment in my day right it's very important because a lot of people are re reactionary they're not aware that there's a greater essence within me i'm not this this head trash, as I call it, these stories, these narratives that we can just learn to be here. And when I hear that you learned this at 16, 17, whatever it may be, it's like, wow, you cut off decades of potentially suffering that a lot of people go throughout in their life that, you know, I was sick for, you know, 38 years because I was completely identified with mm. this story. And if, for yes. you to do this at 17, you really cut off so many years of, uh, Stunned growth, I guess you could say, of just being very reactionary and yeah, you know, I'm I'm super grateful that I I was born in this in this family and that my parents, when I was young, that they started this process for themselves and then they were, you know, able to to invite me and my siblings to see if we wanted to to take part in those classes and on those you know like different modalities and. And they gave us the option, you know, like some of my siblings said, no, they didn't really connect with that. I said, yes. And that was, you know, like the, the path that I, that I choose, but I know that, you know, now it's been over 20 years of, of all of this and, and I know how 
privilege and fortunate I have been to be able to to have all this at uh, such a young age. Yet, how amazing would it be if we teach this to even younger people when we are actually starting to grow up? If we are able to to be modeled by our our, our parents, our family members, our the community, how to be in those first seven years of our life that are the years that we are you know like a sponge and we are learning everything by what we are not only seeing but we are feeling how different like our society would be if everyone would learn none of these different things when we are way younger yeah that, that's where there's a lot of grew up in a market there's you really didn't hear about western practices you really just didn't hear about the western when i was growing up it was always traditional medicine and the tr very traditional type of paths. And I think you're right. If we have conscious parenting where they're teaching their kids meditation at two, three, four years old, how to recognize their feelings, their emotions, and and not be reactionary to that, the life will be profoundly different. Yeah. And you know, some like I, I often say to a lot of my clients that they ask me about conscious parenting. I am conscious parenting is you as a parent you are conscious and then your kid will just learn from that it's not just that you need to teach your kid how to meditate and all of that right. and that's great but if you're able to model and show what it's like to be present when you are having a conversation with your kid what it's like to mm -hmm. to actually take time to be able to breathe to be able to choose what you're doing to be able to live authentically and not to be and not to you know like repress your experience not to escape when you're able to show then that's how your kid learns then yes of course like let's let's show as well how to you know meditate or how to breathe or how to use different practices or techniques but mostly it's about how you're showing up because that that's you know like this is a beauty of kids like the kids know when an adult is present or not they will call you out it, like if you want to know if you're meditating or practicing and like being present go and spend time with kids they will know very easily if you're being present or not and that means just physically there, like present in your being if you're thinking of something else they will notice that mm -hmm. so it's it's very you know in that space i think it's very important to to understand how we are impacting the next generations right because that's how kids learn is by modeling is mirroring their parents that's how they they learn i can see it so much here in new york city the way parents act with their children i'm like their children are going to go up the same way they're not going to make societal changes that need to be made because they're looking up to this authority figure to them and they're misbehaving if you will or not being yeah. present not being authentically who they are i think it's really important for kids to as they learn to be authentic young when they face those teenage years and all the peer pressure and they try to fit into these molds these masks and they don't become the authentic self they get stressed out they get overwhelmed so many issues because i remember yes. going through that myself that you're trying to fit in you'd forget who you are yeah and you know and it's natural this is a natural thing as as we are growing up and we are developing we have this this need or this way of engaging with the world that is we want to belong we want to fit in and the first few years is with our family and then it morphs into being with our friends and we need to find you know that balance between belonging finding that space of belonging and being our authentic selves and a lot of it uh, as we're just talking you know like we are repeating the patterns this is what we're seeing both consciously and unconsciously we repeat the patterns and anything that is not healed everything that's not processed everything that is not integrated is going to continue the kids are going to continue what the previous generations didn't process this is why a lot of a, a lot of times the the work of healing um, and, and I work a lot with trauma, both the sin trauma, the one that we know about and the one that we don't know about, because it's so important to understand that we are playing out a lot of behaviors that are not really ours, 
it's just stuff that was put onto us in a sense. Right. Yeah. All the stuff they're just picking up. And that's why I think it's very important that word you picked up is integrated. I think, you know, our well being is how integrated we are with all facets of life. And if we don't know who we are, then we're not integrated. We're sort of scattered. We're split everywhere. And life is very chaotic and usually very unhealthy. Yeah. And, you know, we, we, we have, and I, I often share this. We're living in a society, mostly here in Western society, um, that is really fast, you know, like it's, it's moving at a really fast pace and we're going, we don't know where we're going, but we're going there and we're going fast and we're going there on autopilot. So we literally have no time to stop for the majority of the population. There's no time to stop and there's no time to, to question what we're doing because there's so much momentum going towards an idea of what either success looks like or whatever it is that we are chasing without the realization of do i really want that do i want to go there do i want to do it this way or is this just what i've been shown you know and, and what i've seen from others and i feel unconsciously that pressure to continue going there instead of stopping slowing down and being able to question and being able to feel and being able to process and integrate and then choosing how do i want to engage how do i want to be what do i want to do where do i want to be you know and like it's it's a i think that at this moment in time it's it's very needed that we do that but as well i understand that not many have the capacity or the opportunity to do that. Right. And that's really important. If people just slow down and make more conscious choices, they will actually have more time because they won't be doing all these things that are unnecessary, that aren't adding value. And I thought it was an interesting study that I saw some years ago that they saw that meditators experienced the present moment three times longer because they weren't all wrapped up in all this busyness and said they could slow down, make these conscious choices and realize you get time back as you become more present. Yeah. You know, this is, and, and I, I always talk about my experience. Uh, of course I have studied and, and learned a lot of different, um, wisdom, knowledge, uh, like traditions, but I, I often talk about my direct experience, which is what I can say, like, this is what is real for me. Mm -hmm. Um, I, at one point I was. I was living in, in the Buddhist center in the middle of a mountain in California for a few years. And I started to experience this, um, this time dilation or expansion of time. And, and I could see just like in the movies, when everything is going in slow motion, I remember vividly, like having that type of experience, noticing how everything was moving so slowly, how, you know, like the little things were moving, like. And I could experience everything and I could move. And then I started to realize how my relationship with time had changed and, and how much more experiencing I was experiencing <laughs> because as you're saying, my, my experience of life changed so much. I, I, I used to com like my comparison is before those moments before i was around 20 um, what i would experience in one year the amount of experiencing of being present in one year now that was happening in one day so like imagine how different it was for me to experience that my days feel so long because i am able to be present and it's expanded uh, and of course, in those days that, you know, like when, I don't know, when someone in my family died or stuff like that, and the day is super long, sometimes it's like, okay, go a little bit faster. <laughs> but that's me as well, you know, like going back to those mechanisms of escaping. And then it's like, no, 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 I'm actually needing to feel this. I need to experience it. Um, but the amount of, of experience that I can live in one day is amazing and then you know by doing that there's time to actually feel everything there's time to integrate and process everything that is happening 
and then I'm able to actually be present with what's next. And then it's easier to be able to just be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think as we we're talking about, people just can't be, just be. They have to be busy, they have to be occupied, just can't sit there and allow life to unfold or trying to press or trying to push. And, and I'm like, just relax. It's unfolding as it needs to unfold. But we get into this instant gratification society, this impatience in society. And that's yeah. what we really just need to just slow it down and then move the direction that we want to move the needle and not be reactionary. Then you create this life. And also talk about a lot of my direct experience as well, because I never had spiritual teachers or anything like that. I just heard about meditation one day, bringing inner peace, and that was enough for me. Mm. Well, you know, like we all have different, um, different moments or different keys that are going to unlock our own, on our own doors. And we are different in that way. We all have a different path. We all have a different like practice that we're going to resonate with. We all mm -hmm. have different messages that we receive at different moments in different shapes and forms. And that is also the beauty of, of our own differences and our uniqueness and understanding you know like just because that happened to you or just because this was my path that doesn't mean that that's anybody else's path it might be but it doesn't have to be exactly the same this is where i believe that you know like the the wisdom and the what's behind all of this is important it's not how it's become for each person um, because that we all have a different programming and different con conditioning that is going to to shape a little bit how we're seeing things. Therefore, we are unique. And, and I think that the more that we understand that uniqueness as well, we can allow ourselves to engage with others in a way that is, you know, serving each person instead of, ah, this is this is my truth. This is the truth. No, no, no. This is my truth. This is my path. This is what I resonate with. Mm -hmm. And what do you resonate with? What do you resonate? With? What do you resonate? With? You know, like it's allowing to understand. Yes, we are the same, but as well, we are unique. Yeah, that's that's the big challenge for many. We're one, yet we're a unique expression of the one. <laughs> Yes. And you know, like there's, there's something like that I love to, to say, because we've been talking about slowing down and I often share a lot around slowing down, slowing down. It's key to be able to, to engage in, in living consciously and taking conscious action. Yet slowing down is a step that is needed because as we've been talking, we're going so fast. Once we're able to slow down and engage in developing awareness, then we can start to speed up. As long as we maintain that level of awareness, it's not about the speed in which we're going, but mostly we're going to need to either stop or slow down to re-engage, to question, why am I doing this? You know, like what's behind my action? Am I actually choosing this or not? Like, do I want to work this job that I'm, that I'm working at or not? Do I want to hang out with these people that I'm hanging out with or not? Are these, you know, habits that I'm having or these patterns of behavior supporting me or not? Is eating in this way supporting me or not? Is consuming in this way supporting me or not? Is watching, you know, all of these things on TV supporting me? It's not about stopping all of that. It's about like realizing is this helping me is this supportive of me or am i just escaping am i not being conscious at all of my behavior and therefore i'm not even choosing right absolutely what was coming to me when you were saying that was like we're slowing down to integrate we have all these parts of us that are so scattered about we're not focused on any particular area so it's just random chaos if you will so we need to slow down and integrate all the facets of life yes and we need to slow down, as you're saying, like to feel, because mostly we haven't learned how to feel. Like this was my experience, as I shared, you know, and like I had for the first 16 of my years, I didn't know how to feel my feelings. Mm. I thought that I did, I didn't. And my experience having worked with thousands of people through these last 15 years is 
people don't know how to feel because that's not what our society is teaching us. Our society is teaching us to just use our hands. Right. Not even in, in a good way, but it's just teaching us to use our heads. So we need to re-engage with our bodies. When we're able to slow down, we might be able to notice where are we feeling our feelings in our body and understanding that that is a step that is necessary for us to be able to, yes, to get to that place of integration. So we need to understand, okay, this is what my mind is doing. This is what my body is doing. And then trying to find how we integrate that and there's you know different approaches that we can take on that but it's key to be able to as you're saying slow down and to feel and as we feel our experience in our body then we're able to choose how we want to engage and then we are integrating and processing what's happening and this is part of the healing as well when we are doing that like we are with the healing i, I often say like when we are working with healing, or at least when I work doing healings, all that I'm doing is I am engaging with the innate capacity that people have to return to wholeness. That is healing, returning to wholeness. And people are already whole, but because of that separation, because of our, of our aspects are separated, then we're not integrating. When we're able to integrate, we come back to that place of wholeness. And that's what healing is all about. Right. I like that. Healing is coming back to the well-being, back to wholeness. And I really don't like to focus on the word healing too much because for a lot of it has a lot of baggage that they're exactly. broken in some way. They're not broken. They're just not integrated. They're just not, they don't know how to feel. And that's what you're saying when people were in their head. It's so hard to monitor thoughts, but it's easier to feel your emotions. Like, why am I angry? Why am I upset? And you don't really know till you slow down. Yes, you know, I, I've been just teaching some courses on, on the mind and meditation because yes, a lot of, a lot of us grow up just with our heads and, and, and there's so many different things that we can do with meditation using our thoughts, using our heads, as well as, you know, engaging with the body, the feelings, the breath. But one of the things that I, that I often say to people is, as you were talking about the word healing, and that's why when I talk about healing, I talk about a return to wholeness. That's already you. There's nothing, you, you know, you're not broken. There's nothing that you need to, mm -hmm. um, to fix because you're not broken. You just need to realize how to come back to that place that it's already there with meditation. It's, it's similar meditation. We need to re-engage on what do we mean by meditation? And when I talk with a lot of people and I share meditation practices, I, I don't even use the word meditation. I, I say, you know, this is for connecting. This is for being present. That's all that we're doing. This is for developing awareness. So sometimes the word meditation has so much baggage and has so much different meaning for for different people based on tradition or, or whatever it is and that when we can engage in oh, these practices are for connecting with myself these practices are for developing awareness and being present in the moment then i, I want some of that you know like I, if if i understand and and i, I used to play basketball when when i was younger that when someone is in those moments, you know, like, uh, and there's, I don't know, five seconds on, on the, on the clock and they say, slow down and they are in the zone. That is what meditation is. <laughs> it's being so present that you can notice everything. And then awesome. even though there's only five seconds, you can see where everyone on the court is. You have time, you know. <clears throat> to dribble the ball or to catch it and then to know exactly where to shoot it whether you make it or not that's irrelevant but it's about the experience of being in the zone and being in the zone is the experience of being present in the present right yeah that's what my meditation practice was really was a presence practice because i really just because initially i thought meditation means you stop thinking because i never really had a teacher and it's like mind thinking stop thinking so it's thought chasing thought so i was like wait I'm not my thoughts. I'm the awareness of my thoughts. And that was my realization. But for me, my practice was mind thinking, where are my hands, where are my feet, what am I sitting on? And just coming back into the moment. 
that's all I did for five mm-hmm. minutes a day. That's all re- was required. Yeah. You know, some my, my one of my teachers used to say, especially when we start practicing, but this can be true even many years after once. Um, he used to say, when you sit to meditate, 99% of the time is going to be catching yourself doing something completely different. You got into some thought train and then it's like, oh, I'm supposed to be here and then coming back. And that is going to happen constantly. And it's about being okay and being kind with the fact that that is going to happen. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, that is the misconception that especially towards the beginning, let's talk about it. that meditation is, I'm supposed to be, you know, like everything is going to go quiet. And I'm going to be in that place of stillness and nothing is going to happen. No thought is going to come up. Well, of course, people are going to be put off by meditation if they think that that's that, because that's not going to be their experience. Like how many people can sit for a long period of time without moving and without thinking? And if that's the barometer for what meditation is, then no one is going to be able to do that no, because every- that's that's not what we've been doing our entire lives we we are thinking and we're using this amazing capacity that we have right yeah that's it so even when you sit and you're pretty still the thoughts are still going to come i like to say thoughts are reminded that you're still alive they're always going to be there it's just like you're just not attaching to them you're not giving yeah. them your power yeah you know my, my- like my teacher used to say thoughts are just like the clouds in the sky they come and they go or thoughts are like babies and they are crying for our attention and what do we do when a baby is crying we go and we go and hold that baby well with thoughts it's about being able to to feel like okay that's there that's calling for my attention can i allow myself not to go there not to cling on to that and not to allow that thought to cling on to me and then to allow myself to just be with whatever it is, even noticing, okay, that's happening. There's a thought that is trying to come in, trying to call my attention. And I'm like, okay, I see you there. Thank you. <laughs> or even if I am engaged in thought, and this is one of the practices that I was doing with, with my students, that even if there's a thought, can I engage with the feeling of the thought or can I engage with as you were saying with the awareness that I'm not the thought I am the one that is noticing that there's a thought therefore I don't need to engage with the content of the thought or the story of the thought because that's not me and understand as well and this is another facet of of, of our thoughts and our and thinking is most of our thoughts are there to help us survive so Our thoughts are patterns of behaviors that learned through our, you know, like generations and our culture, how to survive. That doesn't mean living well. That's mean living with balance. That doesn't mean well-being. That means just surviving. Mm -hmm. So if I am thinking, for example, of, you know, let's, let's put on an example, going to, um, engage in, in public speaking because someone invited me to, to go and, and do that, I might have a thought popping in saying, don't do that, you know, like, and then it's going to come up with different reasons. Like you're not gone, you're not good enough or whatever it is, but all that that's trying to do is to protect me because that has a potential belief that if I go and I get on that stage, I might die. <laughs> Of course, it's, you know, like back in the day when we started, like that started to happen in our brains and it was literal life and death situations. Now it's more situations that it's not, but our mind believes that that is, so it's trying to protect us. So a lot of times for me, when, when I notice those thoughts coming in that are, you know, that we could say that inner critic, then I can engage with it saying like, ah. Thank you for being there, but I'm going to be okay. You know, like, thank you. Thank you for showing up. Thank you for telling me that I'm going to be okay. And the reason, partly I do that to understand that that is showing up and partly to understand that's going to keep on showing up. And if I don't develop a good relationship with those thoughts or with those patterns, 
then, you know, like I'm going to have a worse relationship with myself because that's going to keep on coming up. So the more that I understand, this is part of what is on my brain. This is part of how I'm, you know, like I learned and part of the programming, then I need to engage with it in a different way because that's not going anywhere. I'm, 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 I'm stuck here. I'm stuck in this body, at least for this lifetime. Um, and, and I need to understand how to develop a better relationship with myself, with all of my aspects, with my mind, with my body, with all of it. And the more that I do that, the easier it is to actually live life, really. Yeah, that's the whole thing, living life. That's the whole part of it, slowing down so you can live life so you're not so reactionary. And, you know, we don't have a relate like this inner critic, I call it the head trash. It's the story, it's the stuff that's always beating us up when we're in conflict, fighting that stuff is when the body really starts to break down because uh, it's really hard to explain. It's just like um, we start attacking ourselves when we start to have this inner dialogue. And that's where all these autoimmune diseases come from because we're not integrated. We're in these all the places of chaos and separation. And it's just like, how do we get this to say, okay, it's there. I don't need to react to it. I can be friends with it and it will just... The energy will sort of drift away with it if you don't pay attention to it. Yeah, and you know, some there's something that is super important, and you know, I, I work with this a, a, a lot is everything that we are not allowing, everything that we are not experiencing, everything that we are not feeling or processing, that gets stuck. That is what creates those imbalances that ends up by being our illness most of our physical um, manifestations that we have for sickness are on, on its root are actually something that we didn't allow ourselves to process. Whether that's a big trauma or small traumas, like the whatever it is that we're not able to process, whether that is in the moment or at any time that we can come back to it, that's going to create the physical illness. And this is one of the things that I've seen with many people. Like I, I actually had um, a couple of years ago, I, I was working with this woman and, and she she had cancer. And we did some sessions and, and afterwards, like she came back and like, and she told me that her cancer was, was cured. Um, and she started to tell other people to come and see me. And I was like, I don't cure cancer. <laughs> I'm not doing anything. And I just gave you the chance to process that. And as you process those experiences and those, I call them blockages, those traumas, then the physical manifestations just went away. But I don't do that. So don't tell people that, that I do, that I heal cancer because I don't, I'm not doing anything. What I was doing was that I gave you the chance and you were the one that healed because you were able to integrate and process and come mm -hmm. back to that place of wholeness. Therefore, your body just manifested the new, just understood, oh, okay, now that's, that's gone. Now I don't need to create any more of these chemicals or any more of these, you know, different uh, cells and, and therefore it changed. Like, this is one thing I, I often tell people, <clears throat> the more that we're able to process, the better that we're going to feel on a daily basis, but as well, the easier it is not to get sick. I, I haven't been sick in, I don't even remember, 15 years, 20 years, I, I don't even remember the last time that I've been sick. And, and I attribute that a lot to the fact that I am constantly processing what's going on. And I've been processing a lot of the stuff that was in the past, the stuff that also came before me, the stuff that is relational to my, my system with my family, as well as to those that came before. So the more that I do that, the easier it is to be here and not to you know, repress anything. When we're able to speak, when we're able to share what we're feeling, not attacking someone else, but you know, when we're in, in a relationship with someone, sharing, oh, this is this is happening to me. This is what I'm feeling. When that happened, this is what I feel. Then 
we're no longer repressing, which means we're no longer creating more blockages, which means that we're not creating any more sickness for ourselves. Right, right. Yeah, you've really wandered just back into, you give the tools, bring her back into balance, back into well-being, like there was some return to wholeness. Because when I was very sick, you know, I was just scattered everywhere. I took all my thoughts as true and I was in this battle with my body all the time. I was not balanced whatsoever. My doctors could never figure it out until one doctor just asked me questions and he came back. It's like, oh, you stopped taking your mind as the truth. Yeah. And, you know, this is, this is as well. I, I see nowadays as, you know, where we are in in our history and civilization we have this um lack of connection lack of connection both internally and externally we have the lack of connection internally as we've been talking to all of our aspects to how we actually engage and that is leading to a lot of the stresses to a lot of the depression to a lot of suicides a lot of those symptoms internally and externally as we have that same disconnection, we are having the symptoms of what's going on with um, the climate. We're having the symptom of what's going on with society that we are super separate and, and, and fighting. We have all of this inner and outer experience that it's all based on that connection. If we were able to connect more deeply, we wouldn't get as much of that because we would know how it serves to engage so as i am being kind to my head to my body to how i engage to it how i speak to myself how i feel what i'm putting on you know like to nourish my body then i'm able to also understand okay when i'm engaging with someone and of course i'm, I'm not perfect <laughs> Like, but when I'm engaging with someone, can I connect in a way that I can understand? Oh, you're different than me. I might need to feel, I might need to give you space to listen to you, to understand how, like, is this that we're doing? You know, like, is this how you want to do it? What do you need? What are your needs? What are my needs? Where can we meet? Where, how can we be kind to each other? And then through engaging, with just the people around us, then that starts to have a ripple effect. But we're not giving ourselves the chance to do that because we're separate from ourselves. So if we are separate from ourselves, how can I actually engage with you or with any of my neighbors or the community or anyone else? So that inner work is so important because it has a huge ripple effect. Right. I think that's the biggest problems in society is separation, seeing where it's us against them always in this. And media does a really great job of this division and it's not helpful. And I, like you had the profound experience with time. I had a profound experience with connectedness, with oneness. When I, cause I had this full Kundalini awakening that happened as part of my process. When I came out of that, wherever I looked, I was that. There was like no separation. I was just saw my connection with everything. And just on the, you know, the subway yesterday, I was just sitting there present. I was just acknowledging everyone on the train and realized that's a different expression of the one. I just sending love to everyone, that connection there. Because mm. um, there's absolutely no separation in my world anymore. It's just that we're all interconnected and we're trying to make sense of the world. That makes no sense. Yeah. And you know, Sam, that's, that's so beautiful because, and, and this is one of the cases that you were able to experience it. And even right. though that might not be what you experience all of the time, you already know it. There's a knowing that cannot be unknown. When we're able to experience to that level, there's no going back. I mean, that might not be all of the time, the experience that we're having, but we know it on a level that there's no unseeing or knowing that. And this is one of the keys for me in terms of, you know, how, how to engage, how to engage is understanding, okay, the paradigm that we're living in now is about separation, is about individuality. This paradigm doesn't serve us because we are communal beings we are communal beings internally and externally like my my body is made up of trillions 
of cells and bacteria and viruses and different beings that are all a community that enables this to be to be here as this specific configuration when i understand that then i understand like i'm me i'm not even an individual <laughs> i'm made up of a community so for me to be able to function well all of my cells need to be functioning in what they do well and when we can extrapolate that externally we can extrapolate you know like do i live better or do we as as people do we live better when we are all living individually in our own little boxes and separate from others or do we live better when we are engaging in community when we are in that relationship with others of course if we are living in relationship with others from the perspective of separation then it's challenging but once we're able to move past that and we are able to open up to a new paradigm where we are not longer bound by that separation but that but that that process of what success looks like that is very individualistic then we're able to understand ah oh, this is how we engage this is how we treat our earth this is how we engage in consuming and using resources and understanding okay you know like this person matters this person matters there's there's a lot of things that that we we are living very uh, in a way that it's unhelpful for each of us as well as for society as a whole and for the earth so when we're able to connect with that oneness as, as you did then what we do is we start to engage differently this is what i i, I a lot of times say this is conscious action Conscious action is all about understanding how to engage with myself and how to engage with others to achieve that space of well-being. So it's well-being for me, well-being for you, well-being for the collective, well-being for the earth. And when we're able to do that and connecting with that, then we're able to transform and change what we are doing and how we are to have that impact in the world that we want to see. Right. Yeah, because we can all have this impact in the world. If you see that we are this one collective working together, not separate, then things different. So I just know the simple fact of just connecting with each one, sending them love, changed something within them. I'm I'm sure they probably felt more peace, more whatever, just get them a little bit of stress. And mm -hmm. that's, I think it was really important. What I'm just reflecting is that I was fortunate to have these states of knowing a, a few times. You know, like when I had, it was two weeks into my practice, a very short into my five minute practice, a very short, one day I just had this deep knowing that all is well, that no matter what, all is well. And then I knew myself as this consciousness, soul, spirit, whatever you would call it. And I just knew all my health challenges were over and they were. So it's really interesting that we have these quantum experiences, but if we don't slow down and notice, then they're not a quantum experience. They're just <laughs> more noise. We didn't stop and, and reflect. So yeah. I really want to go a little more into that, how like conscious action, your company came to be. How did that, because you had this early experience, so how did you transform into conscious action? You already described a little bit of that process, but how did this come to be? yeah so you know it was um this when when i came to to new zealand and and i i was already you know before i came to new zealand i was already doing some of these these things but mostly i was focusing on the inner experience and then i started to realize how that inner experience was also influencing my outer experience and and I actually, I, I went to this um, event that it was a screen of the commentary that it's called Plastic Ocean, which you know, shows the, all of the plastics in the ocean and, and, and all of that side of, of the pollution that we have in, in our environment. And after that, I thought, like, I, I was listening to some of the people outside and they were super depressed and they were like, oh, wow, we are, we are doomed, you know, kind of thing. Um, and I thought, ah, oh, you know, this is such a, a missed opportunity now that all of these people were there together, like to 
and now they know more like the the there's more knowing but there's no integration of that there's no processing especially for something that can be super negative um there's no processing and there's no okay what can you do so that was where it was like born from like we can do more of that so i started to create events and gatherings um to raise awareness of different um, topics whether that were interpersonal or environmental or um, societal and to engage whether that was with documentaries or with guest speakers that we had um to be able to just talk about it and then to be able to understand how how can each of us act on that what are some actions that we can take based on where we are and the capacity that we have in that moment so we will talk a lot about different actions that we can take for example on, on topics like that is like okay like do we can we actually see um our own behavior with plastic as an example like are we having a lot of plastic single-use plastic like usage can we reduce that can we remember to to have our own you know like um container so if whenever we go and get takeaways we don't have to to get a new single use con package we can take our own or a coffee cup or whatever it is you know like just finding those things that we as individuals can do or the ones that are working at um at a business you know like can, can we engage in sharing that with the office or with en engaging with uh, some way of gamification or challenges to to see who is the one that can use this least amount of, of plastic or if we are doing uh you know like at christmas giving gift for the office could we instead of giving gift to whatever it is that we're doing that perhaps it's meaningless to give everyone a reusable bottle of water uh, water bottle you know like different things that we can do whatever it is that we are and, and this is the same with every topic that we've that we've looked at and and this is a little bit where it started and it has changed and morphed a lot and you know like we we do have the podcast and i like and i work with with a lot of businesses and a lot of people and running some events and classes so like the the entire thing is to be able to to raise awareness and to just connect as well so for the first few years before uh, COVID came along, it was a lot around connecting here locally with the community in person. And then it started to be a little bit more online as well. And to be able to just have that space of learning and listening to stories, you know, like just as, as we're doing now, um, just sharing stories, sharing different perspectives, sharing different ways, because that could be what ignites someone to to connect with themselves and to create the change right yeah and I, th I thought that was really a, a brilliant name for company conscious action or mindful action because where i was for many years was unconscious reactionary action not slowing mm -hmm. down what is my impact on the whole the collective and that being that interconnected once again you know yeah. it's all about being that interconnected you know some like a lot of times and this is one of the, the biggest things that i started to realize like through through all of these years both with like my work and, and and you know like outside of work is the more that i understand myself the more that i understand my values what i stand for how i am authentically how i want to live how i want to show up in the world the easier it is to realize how are my actions aligning with that because a lot of our actions are just as unconscious as our inner uh, experience so i started to realize as an example like many many years ago was like what i was eating i grew up you know like back in argentina with a typical like argentinian diet of eating everything like meat and dairy and and all of this and then i started to realize through my own inner changes that that didn't align anymore with myself so you know like i i changed like now more than 15 years ago to be vegetarian and now 
uh, and, and I eat a, a plant-based diet, and that's because that lands to me. Oh. And this is one of the things, you know, like I, I've run a lot of events around plant-based eating or veganism, and, and I often say to people, like, this is not about, you know, trying to convert anyone. This is about understanding, is this what you believe? And if, and if it's what you believe, then this is ways that you can engage with that. If this is not what you believe, then don't engage with it. You know, there's no need to, but sometimes we don't know how, but mostly we don't know why. We don't know what's the, um, the energy behind the actions that we're taking. We don't understand what it is that we value. We don't understand sometimes also the impact of our, of our actions. I, I in the past didn't didn't know like for me to be able to eat the food that I was eating, someone somewhere in a farm needed to grow that food, and they were were they using you know like pesticides and chemicals or were they growing it organically? Were those people actually uh, working well? Like would they have good working conditions, ethical conditions or not? I had no idea about stuff like that. Therefore, there was no chance for me to be able to to buy things that were fair trade or that were organic or things like that because I was completely unaware that that was even a thing. And the more that I learned about the impacts of these things, then I started to understand, do I want to still engage on that? Can I still engage in that or not? because we also have our own circumstances and everything, but can I allow my actions to align more and more and more to my truth, to my beliefs, to my values, to the things that I stand for. And, and for me, you know, like I, I love this earth. I love my body. I love, you know, like everyone and, and as much as possible, the more that I know and the more I keep on changing and readjusting, I keep on behaving in a way that I feel like it's supportive for myself for and for others and for and for our earth. So, you know, trying to do as many things that are regenerative, trying to live in a way that is circular, trying to, to understand those cycles. And this is where I love this, that connection of the inner and the outer. I keep on working with myself. I keep on practicing. I keep on understanding how to engage with my mind and body and spirit, as well as with that which is around me. Right. I think that's a beautiful example of aligning to your truth. I think it's probably really where you help a lot of people aligning to the truth. Like the cancer patient, she probably was not aligned before she had cancer. She had something wrong. She wasn't alignment. I think that's probably one of your greatest skills is bringing people into alignment with their own truth, their own uniqueness. So how would they reach out to you if they wanted to get in touch with you? Ah, uh, yes. Thank you for that, Sam. Um, Conscious Action NZ as New Zealand. Um, that's on social media, uh, on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, um, as well as consciousaction.co.nz. Or also search my name, Brian Burneman, um, the same on social media or on there and as i often share you know like there's some things that are there and and i if there's anything that resonates about me or what i do just reach out uh, connect with me um if it doesn't like then all good i might not be the one for for you uh so i work as i said you know like both with individuals um with businesses i work with you know like anybody that feels like they resonate with me and that i resonate with them i only work in that way um so like if i'm able to to be of service to to someone and to support someone to to find that alignment then that's that's why i'm here <laughs> uh, that's great yeah so i'll have all these in the show notes as well so they can just click on links and find that so if there's any last parting words, if you had with somebody that's really having a difficult time right now, what would you say to them? Mm. First of all, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay to, to be where you are. Um, allow yourself to slow down and to feel it. 
um, if you're not able to perhaps seek support by anybody that you know you might trust whether that is a friend family member um a, a therapist a coach and anyone that is able to support because there's nothing wrong with where you are and then the other thing is to to understand that if we're already whole then we don't need to seek anything outside like we we are enough we are perfect already we have everything that we need we don't know it but we do because as you were saying some earlier we're part of that oneness we're just different configurations of that oneness so when you, anybody that is perhaps struggling is six six support there's nothing 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 wrong it's actually like it's not only it's not wrong it's actually positive to seek support because we are connected as well so just because we've been conditioned to believe that we are weak if we are showing any vulnerability or any you know like thing to others because we are struggling is know that it's more than okay and know that it's okay as well to to feel that and to be able to engage with how you're actually feeling you know like perhaps put your hands on, on your on your chest and your belly and take some deep breath over there to slow down and to really engage in this present moment hmm, that's beautiful that's beautiful well thank you for your time brian i really enjoyed our conversation today yeah thank you sam for for creating this space and, and for your wonderful questions as well Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Wellness Wednesdays with Sam the Miracle Man. And we hope you'll continue to discover the power of resilience and the steps we can all take to create our own miracles while on our bumpy path to well-being. But just remember, be present, find clarity, and also subscribe so we can all continue to share this life-changing journey together. See you next Wednesday.